Hey, hey, and welcome back at cloudbackuping.com. My name is Mauricio, and today I'll have an in-depth look on Box. Box is an online storage, synchronization, file sharing, and collaboration suite. Wow, so many things in one. But it is not to be confused with Dropbox. It offers similar features, but Dropbox is more aimed at personal use, while Box is clearly more geared towards small and medium businesses. But it also has a small a personal plan, which lets you play around with it a little bit and offers five gigabyte of free storage. So in this video, we are going to sign up for the business plan and have a little bit a look at its features. There's also an enterprise plan uh, where you can get customized solution, especially for your corporation. So let's have a look at the plan plans and and pricing here. Um, we can see that there is the personal plan, um, which gives you um, five to fifty gigabyte of uh, free um, storage, twenty five megabyte to one gigabyte of file sizes, and is for one user only. And you can also share um, files with it and have a secure transfer access notifications um, and kind of more, a couple of more features that might be interesting for the personal user. However, the personal plan would be a little too, well, let's say limited for this review. That's why I decided to sign up for the business plan where we have additional features such as a desktop synchronization, uh, version history, Google Apps integration, full text search, search and other features that are worth uh, showing here in um, this review. So that's why I will sign up for the business plan. Of course, if you are an enterprise user, you can have more features even, but um, these cannot be part of that review here, unfortunately. The good thing is that you can start a free um, trial and get all the features and try all the features out for 14 days for free. And it costs, um, well, this time it costs $11.22 um, per user um, per month. Uh, normally it is um, $15 per user per month, but here it seems to apply a special promotion. You can get, um, you have to get at least three users. So you have to multiply the $11 times three and can scale it up to 500 users. Of course, you have to pay for those 500 users and you have always 1000 gigabyte that means one terabyte of web storage and also have a two gigabyte of file size limit which is unfortunate if you have larger file sizes but is quite common practice among the backup um, providers to limit file sizes so um, setting up an account is pretty easy you just uh, type in your name and um, if you have a business name you can or a company you can obviously type in your company in as well and sign up with your email and lastly choose a password that should be obviously a very secure password in that case because your data is very important to you i guess and you don't want third parties to have a look at your files so in the next step, you need to um, sign up again. Well, you have to type in your credit card information. So you need a credit card to sign up. Without a credit card, you cannot uh, be part of um, Box. Uh, however, you are not going to be billed until the 14-day free trial expires. So this is an advantage here. There is no risk with typing in your credit card. Again, you have to fill in your details, uh, such as your country, your address, and your name again, and choose the number of users you want to have. So you can say, okay, I want to have 30 users, but obviously then the price increases to $450 per month. This is uh, quite valuable, obviously, for larger teams, but in my case, I will just try it with three users because I just want to add one or two users to test the functionality to um, how it works to collaborate with multiple people. So now after typing in your credit card number, you click on create account and then your account is created and you can start using the power of box. So after creating your account, you are being forwarded to the box file manager directly. And before we start doing anything, let's just have a little look at the interface um, that you find on box.com in your account. On your right hand side, you'll find a little how to get started guide and can review um, the steps that you have already performed and already have 
completed successfully. For example, uh, the creation of a folder, um, uploading and sharing a file, invite collaborators, leaving a comment, added a profile so you can customize here your company profile and add an application, for example, Google Docs. And we are going to, we're not going to do any and every step um, of the way here, but uh, we're going to perform the basic tasks such as creating a folder and uploading a file. So stay with me here um, until we perform everything here. So, and at the top, um, you can find always the, the top navigation gives you the opportunity to navigate um, to other parts of your account that we are going to explore later and also have a look at the file updates um, that have been performed by yourself or by your collaborators. And obviously here in the center part, there are your files and folders, and you can add files by clicking the upload button, or you can simply drag and drop files into um, this window. And we are going to have a look at how that works in just a minute. But first, let's start with the, the first step here of that guide. We are going to create a new folder. So we just click on new at the top right hand corner. And we are going to select uh, create a new folder because this is the folder where we want to stuff our files in and see how the upload and storage works. So you obviously can give the folder a name. We're going to call that folder test files because they're uh, we're going to upload our test files, which are audio files, some uh, raw um, image uh, photo files and some PSD files. And you can now already choose to invite people to upload or download files, for example, and also select the user role. So you can say, OK, you only uh, want to give you permissions or you can even uh, say, well, this is going to uh, be a folder of a co-owner that has full rights. But for now, we just want to keep that folder private and create that accordingly. So after a couple of seconds, your folder is created successfully. And you can see that we have performed the first task of the step by step guide here. And uh, now we can navigate into the folder and you can see it. Uh, it's obviously empty. And now you have two options to upload files. First, you can click on the upload button right here and select the folders and files that you are going to be uploading. Or as I mentioned before, you'll just drag and drop the necessary files into your browser window, which is quite easy to do. And that's why we are going to experiment with that a little bit. I am using a Macintosh here, but obviously you can do that with your Windows PC as well. So look at that. Here are our test files and I just drag and drop the files into the browser window and it starts uploading um, the files immediately. As you can see, the upload performs quite quickly. And here I'm uploading a video of 74 megabytes, but obviously I'm going to stop the video here to not bore you to death. And we're going to be right back. So here we are. And there were some errors. There were um, a message by box that says slow upload detected and it stopped uploading some audio files. I don't know why that happened. I try to run the um, slow connection um, report here on box.com and uh, it couldn't figure out any issues with my connection and my internet connection is pretty fast. So there shouldn't be any uh, problem here. So this is a slight, uh, slight mistake or a slight uh, inconvenience that I detected while uh, using box here in the free version. However, after logging out and logging in again, those files have been and after a while, those files have been uploaded successfully and without any errors. So now that we have been uploading our test files of around one gigabyte in size, let's see what else we can do. We can, as I mentioned before, it boxes a sharing suite. So we can share the files and give other people access to the files and other people the rights to edit and upload other files. So let's invite a collaborator with my case is myself, but for testing purposes, I think this is enough. So you have to type in the uh, email address of your collaborator. And also you can send him a little message and also select here the role. So you can say, hey, it's only for preview. It's uh, or it's even a co-owner of um, of your file. So you can grant several accesses here or you can um, share uh, the link publicly 
for example, if you are working with a client that you have to send a large PSD file or a large photo file or a large PDF to review, you can share, uh, you can invite him to that file and it can be downloaded or viewed or even edited without the need to register for Box. Any collaborator that you invite with an email has to register for Box to um, view and upload and edit those files here. So now let's have a look at how the invitation looks and uh, how this might look at your, at your collaborator's end. So he gets an email which says Mauricio Prinzlau has invited you to collaborate with a folder and now as the collaborator, as the invited person, you just have to accept the invite. But before you get a little preview, what is actually in the folder and what what might be necessary to do with that folder. So you can accept the invite as a collaborator. And obviously you come here to a, another a page where you have to sign up as a collaborator. I'm just going to skip that part here because we already did that with our account. Okay, so now let's see what else we can do with our files that we have uploaded. So let's have a look at the at more options. So there is the preview option for example, and when you click on preview, Box will preview all the files that it understands. Um, those are, for example, PDFs, uh, Word documents, uh, and JPEGs. Here I have a raw image file of my Nikon D7000, so it is not supported to view raw files, but you can download the file and then um, anybody can, or the, the people you want the file to see can preview the file on their machines quite easily. Another interesting way to manage your files and manage the files for your collaborators is, for example, adding um, tags. So you could be adding and tags on each individual files and sort the files then according to those tags. So you can say, hey, this is for the marketing department, for example, and click on OK. So it adds the tag to the file and let's add another tag here to uh, this file and say, well, this is more like uh, for the IT department. And obviously you can also add multiple uh, tags to files if there are um, overlapping tasks for other departments or other freelancers. And those could be also, those could be anything. For example, those could be also names for your collaborators or anything like that. So um, another interesting feature that I wanna show you is adding a task to a file. So especially this is useful if you're working with um, freelancers or other team members, you can say, hey, this uh, task needs to be created for that particular file. So we have a custom instruction here and say, hey, there's some, um, uh, we need a CSS border to that image. So you say, this is the title, make a CSS border, and then say to your developer, please add an image border to all of uh, the images, for example. This could be an, an instruction here. And what is uh, very valuable is it's really a project management tool, basically. You can set a due date, a deadline, basically, for that particular task and add that to your Google Calendar. So you have an, uh, an overlapping of tools here. Uh, you can work with your tools that you're already used to and you can also assign then obviously um, a, a person to that task. You can also assign yourself that task. For example, if I type in my email address here that is assigned to my box account, it identifies me as me, and then I can say, okay, uh, I can verify that. And here you can see the task. Um, make a CSS border is the task, and it is assigned to me, and it also says when uh, the task has been created and what, and what is the due date. So I can select complete and I can respond to the task and say, hey, the task is completed or the task is still incomplete. Um, I'm just providing feedback here, but in my case, the task is complete and I can add a short message. For example, I can say, hey, this is done. All browsers uh, have been tested, for example. Okay, so we click on submit and ready to go. So the file, the task has been done, it is crossed out, and you as a manager can review those tasks perfectly. Obviously, adding tasks is not the only thing 
you can do with uh, files. You can also, if you do not want to connect a file with a task, but need to comment on that file, no matter what, you can add a comment. And this comment can, again, be anything. And it is clearly identified who made that comment and when this comment has been published. So you can say, hey, the border should always be blue. And then add this comment and your developer knows exactly um, what he has to do. He has to make all borders blue and then can reply to your comment. And so you save yourself a lot of email stress and a lot of uh, communication overhead here. Okay, we have experimented now a little bit with files and tasks, and there are a lot more features that Box offers. We cannot cover every feature here, but in the next video, I want to cover an interesting feature that is file synchronization, because file synchronization is very en vogue uh, these days as people tend to have multiple devices and especially companies face the problem of synchronizing files among their employees. So stay tuned for the next video as I'm going to review the synchronization functionality that Box offers. And also, I'll be having a look at the mobile app that Box offers and I'll be testing it with my iPhone. So stay tuned for the next video and if you like this video please recommend it to your colleagues or to anybody who might be interested in testing Box out and I really hope I could help you and gave you a little overview and also save you a little bit of time testing the service out yourself. See you in the next video then. Bye bye.